Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Schuler. I'm so happy that you're joining us today for our showcase. We've got nine or 10 different acts lined up for you today to have you check out, and we'd love for you to make access of our chat uh, that'll be running simultaneously. So if you've got any feedback that you want to give, if you've had any of these performers at your campus before and you want to give some of your opinions and feedback about those shows since you've seen them in its entirety, we would love that. So please make use of that feature. Um, my name is Chris Schuler. I'm one of the owners of Bass Schuler Entertainment. I am not a performer. I am an agent. So please be kind in the chat specifically if you've got bad things to say about the MC. <laughs> You're stuck with me for the next hour. Um, today, uh, we're really excited to be teamed up with our friends at How To Concerts. Sue and Jake are uh, helping us out again. They do an amazing job. For those of you that have seen our showcases before, uh, they've really helped out with all of the logistics of how this event runs. So just know that uh, Jake is back uh, behind the scenes um, making all of the magic happen. And we're going to be talking to Jolene from How To Concerts about some of her programs in a little bit. But um, First, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we've been uh, what we've been doing on it. Obviously, we've been experiencing and living this uh, pandemic lifestyle for almost a year now. Uh, so this is our third opportunity to showcase our uh, virtual performances. So those of you that have seen them before, it's going to look very similar. If you haven't been there before, if you've missed those, all of these are available online. So you can go to bseshowcase.com and you can watch um, other opportunities. Uh, where I make a fool of myself on camera. So feel free to go back and watch those if you want. And I may or may not be wearing the same shirt. I'm not too sure. I should have probably checked before I got dressed today. Anyway, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the packages that we've been doing. Um, it's been really successful in helping out schools that are working on a tighter budget and wanna do some different types of virtual events. Um, one of them is called the five for 55 package. It's five acts for $5,500. It's a cool, we kind of came up with this a catchy title, but basically, the deal is, is if you book five acts with this, we're going to knock $450 off each performer's fee. So we have a lot that are normally $1,950 that are reduced to $1,500, others that are normally $1,450 that are reduced down to $1,000. So uh, we've got to kind of split up into two different camps. You can look at those on our website uh, and take advantage of that. But by all means, you don't have to stop at five. You can do um, you can do five or 10 acts or more. And for those of you that have done a five for 55 with us already, we're just gonna continue going into the spring and into the summer with our virtual prices. So if you've already done it once, you're grandfathered in, you're gonna keep getting those discounted prices. We also list what's called our three for 3000. We know that many of you may still be trying to cram in some last minute diversity programming here in February. We can help with that. We've got many acts that can meet your needs in regards to, uh, diversity programming. So we're gonna give you three acts for 3,000. So you can pick from the artists that are listed on our site and pick any three, they're 3,000 each, or $1,000 each, and a great way to plug in some last minute diversity uh, programming for this month or into the rest of the spring. We don't have to just do this in February, right? Um, so back to me again, I, if you have questions about the five for 55 or the three for 3,000, don't hesitate to put a question in the chat. Sue Boxrood, one of the other agents who's also going to be stuck in the hot seat tomorrow as your MC, is uh, going to be available to answer questions. And I think Scott may even make an appearance in the chat room if you uh, ask nicely. Um, but let's get started. Enough about me. I want to talk to you first off a little bit about our next act, which is Daniel Martin. He's our magician. He has a unique show called Magic Night In. And for the last decade, Daniel has traveled hundreds of colleges and has been uh, doing a lot of these virtual presentations called Magic Night In. It's an opportunity for the students and staff to spend about an hour with Dan online. And he not only does magic tricks, but then teaches you those magic tricks. He'll tell you what to have on hand with you, and then you can uh, learn the tricks along with him. It's really fun. So without further ado, please welcome Daniel Martin. Hello everyone, it is Magician Daniel Martin, and for the last decade I have toured all over the world performing for millions of people live and millions more online. And now we are bringing the magic to you with Magic Night In 2.0. Incredible magic done with organic objects that you've seen on TV. Visuals that are interactive, fun, unlike anyone is doing today and then the second half of the show is a hands-on master class where your guests your students your team are able to do magic using items that they have sitting around and they can go out and share that magic with people the same night so part show part master class for an unforgettable experience 
Let's check it out. If you've ever seen me live, you know I don't do a lot of card tricks. A lot of times they can be cheesy or overdone or cliche or reserved for creepy uncles. But I know a lot of people have been staying safe in and they've been having and hosting a lot of game nights. And Bicycle Cards has been sending out these amazing brochures that come in this little thin envelope to show you the coolest colors of cards, the sizes. And if you need a deck of cards, you just snap and it will literally fall out of the brochure just like that. So that's really convenient. Thank you, Bicycle. Uh, tonight, my friends, we are going to use a blue deck of cards. Um, so just go ahead and keep your eye on this. My, um, my producer is telling me that the blue is kind of hard to see on camera here. If I had red, yes, I think we can make that happen. There we go. Now we have a nice red deck of cards. Yes. Good. Good. We're going to bring someone on to to uh, hang out with us here and help us with what we are about to do here. So let's go ahead and bring someone on here from our audience. Perfect. And uh, sir, what is your name? Uh, I, I'm Joey. Joey, thank you for hanging out with us uh, tonight. And Joey, where, where are you actually physically located right now? Uh, I'm in Indiana. Indiana. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you are hanging here. We are in Michigan, so we're not too far away from each other. So being what that is, um, here's what I would like you to do for me. This is kind of a strange request, but I would like you to do me a favor and take one of your hands uh, and just hold it up. So just hold it up and take your yeah, uh -huh, right. and take your hand and put it on top. Yes. Right, perfect. Yeah, and squeeze them, squeeze them tight so nothing can get in or out. Now, really, really simple, Joey. I'm gonna just gonna go through the deck of cards, and you're just gonna say stop. To make it fair, I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm going to just riffle through so you can say stop so it's as random for me as it is for you. Cool? Cool. All right, buddy. Here we go. Say stop whenever you want. Stop. Okay. <laughs> We're going to cut to a card. Uh, do you see it right there? I do. Good. In a nice loud voice, tell everybody that card. Uh, the three of hearts. Three of hearts. Perfect. We are going to try something special with the three of hearts. We're gonna do this nice and slow. I'm gonna rip a little corner out of the card. Joey, I want you to watch. I'll do this nice and slow. You're not gonna believe it. As I take that piece and I slowly make it vanish. Like that. <laughs> Joey, even though I'm here and you're there, I want you to open your hand for me right now. No way. Open no. Your hand. <laughs> no. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up to the screen. Hold it up to the screen so everyone no. can see. Oh. My friends, that is a magic night in Miracle Joey. Thank you so much for hanging with us tonight. Crazy miracles happening at Magic Night Inn. And speaking of crazy miracles, I have something I'm about to show you that'll blow your minds. Last hotel I was at uh, was in Miami and uh, I borrowed this champagne bucket from the hotel. Per look, look, they're not missing it, right? So we're gonna use this champagne bucket here. I'm gonna borrow this table here from back in the theater. That's gonna go there. And we are gonna put the bucket right there. You can keep an eye on that bucket. When you see a magician, typically when you were a little kid, they take a coin and they would pull a coin from behind your ear. I thought, what if we can make that look a little bit cooler? What would it look like? We're going to use three silver dollars, my friends, and we're going to do this nice and slow. One, two, three. What I love about Magic Night in, my friends, is that all of you, no matter what size screen that you're watching on, have a front row seat. So here we go. Coin number one. Here we go. One, two, three. That's coin number one. Two coins, my friend. Two coins left. We take another one away. I want you to watch as it slowly vanishes. That's two, my friends. The last coin for my skeptical people. We'll do it nice and slow. And my friends, that would mean that there are one, two, and three coins. Just happened. Hey, thanks, Dan. That was awesome. I don't know how he does it.
Trust me. <laughs> uh, it's a really fun show. You can do uh, just a straight magic show or you can do the one where he just teaches you how to do things. We also have a new one show called uh, Magic Date Night where we could actually uh, ship in advance uh, a box of items that can be used in the show. And then it's a interactive show where those items that they're, that your students have with you are used as part of the show so that it's really, really interactive. It's a fun uh, evening. So if you're interested in Dan, just let us know. Love to have him. He's also part of the five for 55. Uh, and I want to just keep moving. So the next act up is Angie Kielhauer. Angie K is uh, been with us for a while. She was on season 10 of The Voice. Uh, she is originally from El Salvador, so she speaks fluent Spanish and loves to work that into her set. She does an all request show for you. Try to stump her, you won't. She knows over a thousand songs, she's amazing. The other thing that she can do is do a program where she does a songwriting class with you. So your students can uh, get on the call with her and in that hour, you'll write a song and she'll even record it for you and for the students to have. It's really neat. So really interactive and fun uh, virtual show that Angie does. And without further ado, here is Angie Kilhauer. Hey guys, my name is Angie Kay. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, you might've seen me on The Voice or on tour with uh, Jake Owen or Chris Jansen or Jordan Davis. Um, I offer two different kinds of things for these virtual events. The first one is obviously a concert. Uh, I do it a little different because uh, I love to take live requests from you guys as I go. So though I can't see the comments right now because of the way this showcase is set up, normally I'd be going back and forth with you guys and, and finding out what kind of music you listen to. Uh, but I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with my latest single. This is called Real Talk. I actually collaborated with Thomas Rhett and uh, his producer, Jesse Frazier, to get this out there. Um, there you go. We've been flirting, we've been drinking, ain't been saying what we're thinking Creo que me estoy enamorando With every sip of reposado I can barely keep myself together And this buzz ain't gonna last us forever no. Everything about you is perfect Ain't no other way to word it Real talk I want you, gotta have you Come on baby, won't you dance with me? Oh, gonna say it, ain't gonna make it Any harder than it has to be, no smooth it sounds I want you so bad right now real 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 talk real talk da 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 real talk da 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 so there's just a quick verse and chorus of that song uh if you want to hear more you can actually just find me on Apple Music, on Spotify, just Angie K. Uh, the second thing, virtual event that I offer is a virtual songwriting session. So basically I'll get together with you guys and kind of peel back the veil on what I do for a living. I literally go into rooms and I write songs every day. And it, it, it probably sounds to some of you guys like that's such a wild idea, but I promise you, some of y'all that are watching this right now are capable of hit songs just as much as all of my friends here in Nashville. Um, I also think it's really important, especially in college, to have a reason to let your creative mind work on something that has absolutely nothing to do with all of the career and college and all these pressures that you're under. Um, I think that's super healthy and, and good for your, for your mental health overall. Um, so I love teaching you guys how to do that. I'll, we will literally write a song together uh, with me kind of helping you shape it. I'll say things like, okay, we need that sentiment, this phrase, but with like two less syllables. And we'll go back and forth in the comments, and create um, an awesome song by the end of it. And once we finish off uh, and we say our goodbyes, I will also go ahead and record a acoustic version for y'all to have forever. Um, I've done a few of these so far and honestly, they're so near and dear to my heart. And I feel like the people and the students that I've met have become such close friends and we still talk. Um, so I hope you guys, that's something that is interesting to you because I would absolutely be honored to get to, um, to share the insights of, of how to write a song so that you guys realize that that's accessible to you too. Uh, but here's another example of another song I wrote. The concept behind this one's called Everybody Sunsets. So the idea is to not get so down on yourself, comparing yourself to others because, uh, things that we share in this world are so, mo so much more valuable than anything that can divide us. Um, like a beautiful sunset. 
Saw this dude pull up, get out of his brand new Ferrari That trophy wife, that money life, they look like Ken and Barbie Bet every night's a party, I trade up in a heartbeat Look back at my beat up truck and started feeling sorry Ooh, whatever they were going, it was cooler than me then it dawned on me that everybody's sunsets, everybody regrets, everybody's ego is their biggest weakness. We all got our demons, we're all keeping secrets, we're all trying to measure whose life is better than I remember. There's another quick verse and chorus on that one. I actually just finished producing that with uh, with Jake Owen, who's one of my managers and a few other big producers, and hopefully it'll be out next month, we'll see. But yes, I would absolutely love to get to play some more songs for you guys. I would love even more to write a song with you guys. So uh, let Bachelor know if you're interested and stay tuned because there's a ton more amazing and talented performers coming up right after this. Making events memorable and engaging is difficult, especially right now. That's where How To Concerts comes in. Just makes my job a whole lot easier. The part of my job that is easier because I get to work with How To Concerts is everything. They make everything so much easier. Am I allowed to say everything? They definitely have made my job easier just by like doing all the parts that I don't have the time to do as well. We've been helping clients just like you create amazing experiences like cooking classes, celebrity Q&As, concerts, drag and celebrity bingo events, and more. From the talent to virtual production, we'll provide the solutions to fit your budget. Visit howtoconcerts.com to learn more. Hey, Jolene. How are you? Hey. <laughs> Good. How are you today? This is going great. I well, I haven't screwed it up yet, but uh, we still got some time to go. So hopefully, I won't ruin it uh, for anybody. But um, good to see you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've teamed up with uh, Jake and Jolene from How To Concerts to help us with this event. And uh, because middle agenting and all these other types of programs are definitely should be left to the professionals. Uh, Scott and I and Stu uh, teamed up with uh, Jake and Jolene last year to help us in that area. So they're our referral partners on any national act because trust me, they want to do it and I don't. So please, God, let's do that. Now, obviously, since um, no, March, we haven't been able to do any real major concerts. So that's had to step aside. So as we've talked about in the past, we've sort of uh, shifted. And for you, you guys have been going crazy with bingo events and not only with Drag queen bingo, but also with uh, celebrity bingo. You want to talk a little more about that? Yeah. So, yes, we're doing the celebrity Q&As and other things, but we've found that uh, a virtual bingo works really well. <laughs> uh, it gets students there, gets people excited about the event. Um, people come for the prizes, but end up being super entertained by the, the um, celeb host. So we have a relationship with a company that has like that represents 30 or more uh, celebrity drag queen hosts. We've even had Angie Kay, we've had Jeff Sheen, we've had several Bash uh artists host these bingo events and they're really fun. And bingo just is like a really good moderator for a Q&A and you end up having a really entertaining, just engaging event. And we've had great attendance. So we run all the time. Uh, for the, the buyers and uh, they've been going really well. Well, I, the responses that we've gotten have been amazing and everybody really has a great time. And I think for all of us right now, there's, you know, some virtual burnout with a lot of the students and you have to think what's really connecting and what's getting them to get in front of their computers again after a long day of being in front of their computers. And the bingo has been huge. And I, I think anybody that's on the other end of this camera 
has probably found that that's the case. When you give away free stuff, uh, they show up. And uh, and if you've got somebody unique and that knows what they're doing in the MC role, it really helps. This is a very good example of that. You want to have somebody that knows what they're doing and can have fun with it. And you know, as I mentioned, um, you know, there's really no you know, end of the creativity that you can come up with in regards to how it's emceed, because we definitely could do something as, you know, really crazy and outlandish with the drag queens, but also having Angie Kay do it. She was doing songs in between and having a great time with them. And then our comic who's coming up next is Jeff Sheen. And 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 the comics have been having a great time with it as well, working in jokes and interacting with the students. And it's been, been really fun for them too. Yeah, Jeff loves it. <laughs> <laughs> So all of them, yes, every one of them has done it, has said, please book me on that again if you anybody wants me. So if you liked Angie Kay and want to have her as your uh, your bingo host, which she can do that too. Uh, and then um, we're going to talk a little bit more a little bit later about uh, Jill, who's your uh, celebrity chef that's going to teach on how to cook. And those are other interactive things that students can learn from. And we're going to have a little bit of info on her uh, in a little bit later. Cool. All right. So uh, I don't know. Am I done with you, Jolene? I think I'm done with you. <laughs> you're you're good, but I think we segued really well into into Jeff is next, right? Yeah, Jeff's next. So Jeff Sheen's our comedian. He's amazing. Uh, he's quirky. He's weird. I'll give him that. And uh, we've done a couple different shows with him. Uh, one we call it Cooking with Chef Jeff, where he does his version of a cooking show while telling jokes. And he is not the best cook, but he has a lot of fun doing it. Uh, or just does straight stand-up. So today, on this next one, I think is just Jeff doing straight stand-up. So please enjoy comedian Jeff Sheen. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Sheen. Great to be here in my room again. <laughs> uh, this whole time, I've been playing video games. That's it. This whole pandemic, just video games. Just being a grown man, having fun with other dudes' children, like a weird stepdad. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> My girlfriend keeps getting mad at me. She's like, stop playing video games. And I'm like, baby, I'm parenting right now. <laughs> but yeah, this is lonely for a lot of people I know. Uh, I grew up an only child, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I was an only child until I was 13, which isn't a family. It's just three people. That's all it is. My parents would be like, we're a family. I'm like, we're a death away from a partnership. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, I had a friend who'd be like, I gotta go home. It's family dinner night. I'm like, all right, have fun. I'm gonna have pork chops with a married couple. So enjoy your family dinner. I'm gonna go be a third wheel again. <laughs> you can't do anything, any at all, nothing. Like parents be like, wanna play board games? I'm like sure, let's play Clue. You know, was it you? No, then it was you, game over. That's Clue, we're done. <laughs> like I was so glad that my sister was born too. Cause I could see my parents aging and I was like, oh no, I'm gonna end up taking care of more people than they had to. <laughs> How is this fair? Was this a scam? I need some help. Yeah, and I was also weird, too. I was a very neurotic kid, you know. I used to be a whisper repeater. I would say everything twice. And the second time was a whisper to confirm that I had said anything. So I'd be like, bears are scary. Bears are scary. <laughs> now, and I was also pale with red hair. So I was a ginger that whispered things, which is a demon. Yeah, nobody wants to hang out with a demon kid. I'd be like, hey, can I spend the night at your house? Can I spend the night at your house? <laughs> You're like, oh, what are you, a monster? I'm like, no, I'm a little boy. I'm a little boy. <laughs> this creepy kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm also from the Midwest, too. That's where I grew up in the Midwest, the land of unaffectionate people, Midwesterners. Like, I saw my dad pinch my mom's butt one time in my entire life, just once. Remember, he pinched it, and she went, woo, Michael. <laughs> And even I got excited. <laughs> That's how rare love was. Even I was like, whew, you know, like all three of us were excited for different reasons. And uh, then I remember he took his shirt off. And I was like, uh oh, do they know I'm in here? What am I about to see? And then he went and mowed the lawn. So that's how Midwest people make love. So you get each other all riled up, then do a chore. <laughs> yeah, what else? I've been working out a little bit too, you know? There's nothing else to do. I figured maybe I'll come out of the pandemic swole, you know? Because I'm not an alpha male. I've never been an alpha male. You all know alphas, right? Just muscles and wiener. Like, it's, they got two things, you know? I'm not alpha at all. I'm beta. I'm second tier, which is fine, you know? There's a lot of beta males now. There's so many betas, tons of betas. We could form an army of betas. We just need a leader. I just, I don't know who would lead. <laughs> 
Uh, it'd probably be a strong woman, to be honest. Just be a strong woman. A bunch of skinny men being like, yes, mama. And then we'd take over the world. <laughs> yeah, I've never been a big guy. You know, I, I want to, but I never was. I've always been very thin. Like, even to this day, I don't like roller coasters. Because sometimes you get on the ride and you pull the bar down. And it'll hit the person you're sitting next to. And then I'd always have space. And I'd be like, well, we need to hug or link arms because I don't want to fly out of a roller coaster. What a nightmare. Just like a piece of paper. Just, and I'm gone. Like, that's terrible. And also, everybody on the ride has to go through that. I can't imagine. You're on a roller coaster and you see some guy disappear off into the sun. You can't get back in the coasting mode after that. They're just being like, yeah! Woo! Oh no! Oh, did you just see? Oh, ooh, a tunnel! Yeah! <laughs> you can't get back into coast and boat. It's insane. Everybody gets mad at you. Yeah, this has been my show. I also like to end my sets uh, towards the end with interactive questions. I like to ask uh, my college students who are watching to answer in the chat. Would you rather questions? I think they're so fun. Uh, like, here's an example. Would you rather be a unknown superhero or a famous supervillain? And the amount of people that choose famous supervillain is is, uh, is kind of shocking. Maybe not shocking at all. I think it's, I blame Instagram. But everybody wants fame, and they don't care how they get it. <laughs> but yeah, this has been my show. Thank you very much. I'm Jeff Sheen. Um, take care of yourselves. Hi, I'm Emmett Strzok. And for the past couple of years, I've been touring the nation performing as a speed painter. But now I'm getting ready to teach you tips and techniques that I have learned over the past couple of years in my new paint class, Paint Night Live. Paint Night Live is an exciting and relaxing virtual program that brings the joy of painting into the comfort of your own home. When booking Paint Night Live, you and your students will be sent a special box with all the materials and supplies needed to create your very own masterpiece. Whether painting gorgeous landscape paintings, your school's mascot, or even your favorite Disney or Star Wars character, you get to choose which design that you want you and your students to learn. All Paint Night classes are offered via Zoom in my professional and state-of-the-art recording studio. So get ready to start painting your very own masterpiece with Paint Night Live. Hey, thanks, Jeff. That was an awesome set. I, I'm glad I had that little impromptu, that little space there between with that, with Evan Strzok because I was, I was kind of, uh, kind of crying uh, through that whole set. It was awesome. Uh, I love Jeff. He's really funny. Uh, and then it scrolled right into Evan Strzok. Evan Strzok is our speed painter. He's at the ripe old age of 19. He just turned 19 over the weekend. Uh, amazing artist. And for some of you that have had him, he does an amazing speed painting show where he'll paint five different paintings in that hour, uses Emmy Live, uh, really nice high def cameras and sound. And that show is awesome because you get the paintings at the end. He gives them away to students that are online and watching and he'll ship them out to you, which is really cool. And then uh, we just started with the Paint Night Live with uh, How to Learn to Paint with Evan Strzok. And uh, we'd love to talk to you a little bit more about that too. Um, Evan is part of our Five for 55. So keep that in mind. Obviously, we just have to charge extra for the paint products that we ship to you. We can ship them to the school and you can have your event on campus in small settings, or we can ship them directly to students if you need them to. Uh, so that's what's up with Evan Strzok and Jeff Sheen. And where do I'm going to next? I'm going to another comedian, Mike Kaplan. Mike is a hilarious comedian. He's been on The Tonight Show. He's been on uh, seen on Netflix where he's had his own uh, uh comedy show. Um, he's also been uh, performing in uh, all the rooms in his apartment over the last six months. So please welcome the very funny Mike Kaplan. Hello and welcome to wherever you are. I am Mike Kaplan, a stand-up comedian reporting to you live from wherever I am, right here in my home, far away from you, which is the nicest thing we can do for each other, staying away from each other, because these are challenging times and we have to find joy where we can. For example, did you know that it's 
here's a great thing about right now. It's much easier to be a hero in this day and age than it ever was before. It used to be to be a hero, you had to run into a burning building and try to save people. And today, all you have to do to try to save people is not leave your own building. All you have to do is nothing. The exact opposite. Just stay right there. Stay right there. You're doing it. 100%. You are my hero for not breathing on me, for not coming near me, for staying in your room, in your building far away. And I'm happy to be your hero as well. We're both being we're being as heroic as possible, and I thank you for it. Uh, it's it's hard these days. As a comedian, uh, I I used to travel all the time. For 18 years, I would travel, and then for the past billion years, during 2020, for the most part, I did not travel, and I would only do shows online. And it feels more like I'm telling people about my jokes more than telling people my jokes. I'm like, gather round, folks, gather round, and hear tell of a time when folks used to gather gather round and I would tell stories about traveling to different colleges and how I used to go to Boston University and there in 2005 I actually won a stand-up comedy competition I was officially BU's funniest student which means out of 32,000 people I was the funniest of the 11 that were in the contest and it was a great honor for me and for you now. Before I went to BU, I actually went to Brandeis University where I studied psychology with a professor named Raymond Knight. He was a professor by day and Raymond by night. And Professor Raymond Knight, I'll never forget this, told us on the first day of class, the average human attention span, he said, was 45 minutes. After 45 minutes of the same thing, it was very difficult for the average human to continue to pay attention. 45 minutes, that's it. And this class that he was teaching was 90 minutes long. So that is literally all I remember from that class. And it's very valuable. I've, I've remembered it for decades. And I pass it along to you now in this video that is under five minutes, and yet I'm still Still concerned that your attention might be flagging. So let's do a couple things to mix it up. I'll show you where I've been traveling over the past year or so. I've been to virtual campuses like this one and this one. Look at all those people who aren't anywhere near me. And this building and this one. Ooh, and inside this one and in front of that logo. And also on a beach and in the Aurora Borealis. And then in a virtual comedy club and in the sky and in the space and in the grass and uh, on a bridge, why not? And also in front of my own face at my bar mitzvah. That's me, look at that. Pay no attention to the fact that I'm disappearing into my own hair. Ah, uh, but this guy knows. Look at that, it's my nose. So, we're back. Wow, thank you for continuing to pay attention through all of this. We're all doing our best to pay attention, to learn, to, because that's, that's what life is. It's about growth and evolution, and that's why I love science, because science is always gaining new information, always learning new things, always correcting it Itself when it makes mistakes. Like scientists were just saying yesterday that it was Tuesday, and now they're saying that it's Wednesday. Make up your mind, scientists. But scientists, they're always open to being wrong. And that's great. It's a great way to be. Because if you're not that, then you're basically saying, like, look, I've stopped growing. I was a baby before, and now I'm still a baby because I stopped growing. I'm just a baby, 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 all the time. Can't you see? So I love science, and I love this game that I've come up with called Science Says that I've been playing for basically the past year. And the way that Science Says works is, for example, if science says something, then you do it. You know how the game works. So Science Says, wear a mask. Absolutely, I'll do that. Thank you, Science. Science Says, stay six feet apart from people. Absolutely, I'll do that, Science. And now drink bleach. Okay, bop, 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 Science didn't say. So only do the things that Science Says, and then you will uh, win the game of continuing to be alive and learning and growing. And here's the thing. I, I thank you for being where you are, for wearing masks, for staying apart, like for having your building be a mask. I think that if you if you don't want to wear a mask, just consider it like you're building a wall around your face and staying within those walls as much as you can away from me. And I'll hope to meet you where you are in some virtual way in the future. Thank you for being here right now with me. Uh, much appreciated. My name is Mike Kaplan. Goodbye. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Mike. So Mike Kaplan, he was saying a lot of stuff. I wasn't really paying attention, but I heard it was funny. Um, I wanted to keep moving here if I can and talk a little bit about make and takes because I think Virtual has been awesome, but there's been times where you need to have some things on campus where you can do some small 
uh, team building exercises, do some things where the students can have some things to make and take or take and make. Uh, and we have those as well. Uh, as you can see, the little screen next to me has got information on word art. Word art is a really fun uh, thing that you can do. This is what it looks like. That's my name. I made it myself. Follow the instructions. Didn't screw it up. So there, it's easy. Word art's really fun. Uh, we can ship those directly to your campus and you can ha uh, hand those out to students and they can make them themselves. We also have string art. String art is super cool. Uh, we've teamed up with My Craft Creative and they are doing our string art and vision boards. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of different patterns uh, and we can even customize one for you if you'd like. So if you wanna use your school um, lettering or your state or those types of things, we can customize one for you. We can ship string art uh, directly to your offices and then you can be surrounded by a lot of boxes or we can ship them directly to the students' homes and then you don't have any boxes in your office. So all the better, we can do that. We also have vision boards. So if you need to get your act together and try and figure out what you're gonna do with your lives and you can do vision boards and the vision boards are really fun to do. Uh, we can ship those to your offices as well. We're working on shipping those to home and uh, we should have those ready to go to ship to home uh, before too long. And then below, we also have you stuff it critters. So we can do the critters, we can do emoji pillows, we can do candy heart pillows. Um, those are all options and we're happy to put together pricing for you on the you stuff it critters. All of those that are in the picture were put together by my 11 year old. So as you can see, it's not too hard. We'd be happy to and send you instructions if you're not sure how to stuff foam into a critter. But the nice thing about it is, is we send you the critter, they get your own customized t-shirt and the foam is already vacuum sealed in a packet. So it's very easy to hand out to students and those can be shipped to students' homes too, if you'd like. All right, that's our make and takes. We're gonna have a little bit more about that probably tomorrow with Sue. Uh, but uh, if you have questions about the make and takes, just send us an email or send us a question in chat and we can send you all that pricing. Okay, great. Um, what do we have next? Sung Beats. Sung Beats is a beatboxer. Sung Beats is a beatbox champion who performs music live on the go by layering his voice on a loop station. His virtual show consists of beatbox mashups of your favorite songs, a fun interactive beatbox lesson, and a chance for your students to create their own song using their own voices. So please welcome Sung Beats.
Hello? Oh my God, this is Stacy Adams from Student Activities at Jefferson College. We are watching the showcase and we would actually love to have you virtually. And I wanted to ask you if you could give us a quick shout out in your music, that would be amazing. Oh, hey Stacy, thanks so much, I appreciate that. Um, I would love to give you guys a shout out. In fact, every school that I perform for, I make a personalized custom song. And I even teach the students how to beatbox. It's a very cool interactive platform. Uh, once again, can I ask the name of your school and the mascot? We are Jefferson College from New York, and our mascot is the Wildcat. All right, thanks, Stacy. I got you. Let's see what I can do. All right, thanks. I have an idea. Wildcat, uh, uh, go. Go wildcat, go, go, 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 go wildcat. Go, 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 Wildcat, go, 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 Jefferson College. Wildcat, go, 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 Go Wildcat, go yeah. This is Sun Beats once again, Loop Station Champion Thanks for enjoying the show And I hope to see you guys virtually The best virtual events are highly interactive And because of that, they're here to stay Chef Jill Everman hosts a virtual cook-along style cooking class that is both entertaining and interactive. You'll learn practical cooking tips and tricks you can actually use. Holding your knife correctly to get your finger off the top of the knife. I don't want to see that. You don't think I can see you through this camera? I see you. I'm watching. Grab that blade, right? Pinch it. Grab that blade. Once you choose your multi-course menu, we'll send you the recipe cards, grocery lists, and then you join Jill on a video call to cook up an amazing meal. Hey, welcome back. Again, if you forgot who I was, I'm Chris Schuler, one of the agents at Bass Schuler Entertainment. And I wanted just to uh, say, hey, that was uh, Sung Beats, who you just saw beatboxing. He does an amazing show, always had a great time with him. He's really interactive, obviously, and his show is uh, over the top. He puts a lot of energy and heart into it, so I hope you bring him to your campus. Then followed by that, you saw Chef Jeff Schill, uh, Jeff Jill. Uh, Chef, that's hard to say, actually, now that I'm trying to make him out of my mouth. Uh, so she does an amazing show, also with how-to concerts. Uh, Jolene can take care of you if you want to bring her to your campus. So uh, we can talk a little bit more about her uh, tomorrow if you're going to be tuning in with uh, her and Sue. Um, I do want to move on to our next performer. It is poet Ashley Hayes. Ashley Hayes is a poet uh, from Atlanta by way of Chicago. Her poem for colored girls who don't need Katy Perry when Missy Elliott is enough went viral. Missy Elliott was so moved and she showed up at, uh, at Ashley's house, actually. And Ashley is the host of uh, Higher Learning, an educational podcast for creatives. She also not only does uh, her poetry show uh, for you virtually, she also has a lot of amazing workshops that she can uh, present as well. So please, uh, on our website, check out some of the different workshop options that Ashley has available. So please welcome Ashley Hayes. Hello, my name is Ashley Hayes and I'm a poet and spoken word artist from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm so excited for the opportunity to bring my 45 minute virtual poetry reading to your schools and to your living rooms. And I would love to give you a snippet of what you can expect when I perform for your college or university. I'm gonna perform one of my favorite pieces to perform, which is called For Colored Girls Who Don't Need Katy Perry When Missy Elliott Is Enough. 
third grade. I'm in the hallway and I'm sure I shouldn't have been and Corey White comes up to me and asks, yo, have you heard the new Missy Elliott track? I reply, who is Missy Elliott? At the time, my parents only let me listen to gospel in the smooth jazz station, but that day, I went home, ran upstairs to my room, closed the door, which is a cardinal sin in a black mother's house, and I waited on TRL to come on. And then it happened. Metallics in a black trash bag fill my TV screen, and I hear the coolest thing I'd ever heard in eight years of living. Beep, beep, who got the keys to the Jeep? Vroom, and at that moment, I had my entire life figured out. I was gonna grow up to be Missy Elliott. I spent the next 10 years of my life recording and rewinding videos to learn dance moves, passing that Dutch, getting my freak on, trying to figure out what the hell she was saying and work it. There were so many artists I could have idolized at the time, but Missy was the only one who looked like me. It is because of Melissa Elliott that I believed that a fat black girl from Chicago could dance until she felt pretty, could be sexy and cool, could be a woman playing a man's game and not be apologetic about it if you ask me. What well, representation in the media is important, I will show you. My velour outfit in the matching Kango had I begged my parents for. I will show you a woman who learned how to dance until she felt pretty. Feminism wears a throwback jersey, bamboo earrings, and a face beat for the gods. Feminism is to bring Rap Missy Elliott, Lil' Kim, Angie Martinez, and Left Eye on the Not Tonight track, Feminism, says, as a woman in my arena, you are not my competition. As a woman in my arena, your light doesn't make mine any dimmer, dear Missy. I did not grow up to be you. But I did grow up to be me and to be in love with who this woman is, to be a woman, playing a man's game and to not be apologetic about any of it if you ask me. What well, representation is important, I will tell you. On days I don't feel pretty, I hear the sweet voice of Missy singing to me. Pop that, pop that, jiggle that, that, and don't stop getting till your clothes get wet. I will tell you that right now there are a million girls just waiting to see someone who looks like them. Like I said, I am so, so excited for the opportunity to bring my poetry about empowerment, about the power of being a woman and being femme and all of these intersectional identities. And we talk a little bit about love and how to heal broken hearts. And so feel free to reach out to Bash Schuler to book me. I have availability all semester long. And you can also book me for workshops. One of my favorite workshops to conduct is called Petty Poetry, where we take inspiration from the Little Rascals, from Drake music, and we we write those petty poems. We write those things that we probably think, but don't tweet or don't say to people. And we process our grief and our rage through the writing of poetry. So feel free to reach out to Bash Jeweler. Feel free to follow me. I'm at Ashley Hayes on Instagram and Twitter. In the meantime, be sure to hydrate, moisturize, mind your business, and wash your damn hands. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I wash my hands, I promise. Hey, I want to keep this uh, party going here if we can. Our next performer is Christopher Carter. He's a mentalist. And what he does is kind of hard to describe. He's been called the world's greatest mind reader, but he's not psychic. He has no special powers. Uh, he's just in the business of freaking people out. In, in his own words, he makes a living playing with other people's minds. Please welcome Christopher Carter. Connor, I would like you to think of a person's name, but I want this to be very specific. I want you to go back into your childhood and don't say out loud, but think, Connor, of the first name of the first person that you can remember having a crush on way, way, way back when you were a little boy. Doesn't have to be the first one ever, Connor. Just the first name that pops into your mind. Do you have a name in your head? All right. I am going to just have you look at me. When I say go, I want you to say the name in your head. Definitely not out loud, but only in your mind. Are you ready, Connor? Yes. Yeah. Think the name now. I'm going to take a guess, and I'm going to ask you only one question. Uh, did this person have darker hair or lighter hair? Darker. That's what I thought. Okay, let's uh, let's try this with uh, with uh, Abby. Let's try this with Abby. Abby, I want you to think of a four-digit number, but here's the catch: it has to be personal or meaningful to you. So no random numbers. I mean, you could uh, maybe have the last four of your social security number, the last four of your phone number, the last four of your credit card number, or just two important numbers mashed together, as long as they mean something to you. Abby, do you have an, an, a number in mind? I do. Look toward the camera, concentrate on it. Think the first digit. I think I got it. Think the second digit. 
And I'm a little less certain about that. The third digit. All right, I think I got it. I think the fourth. Mm. I don't think I've got the fourth. It's not a seven, is it? No. No, let me go with my, my other guess. I don't want to show you what it is. We will move that. And finally, Lucas, you're the big finish on this. Rather than me guessing your thoughts, you're going to guess mine. I'm going to try to draw a picture, which I will try to project into your mind. By the way, Lucas, I'm a lousy artist. So if I drew a stick figure dog, you would have no idea what the hell it was. It would just seem like some random experiment gone hideously out of control. So I'm going to stick with simple geometric shapes. I'm going to draw two of them, one of them inside of another. Uh, so for example, like a square inside of something else only. I'm not going to send you a square, but here's the most important part. They are not going to be the same shapes. Each one is different from the other. So I don't want you to watch my marker while I draw. Close your eyes for a minute. And Lucas, I am drawing the first simple shape right now. Try and zero in on it. I'm inside of that. I'm drawing a completely different shape. All right. I've taken my guess. There's no going back. Connor. I asked you to think of a person's name. I did get an image of a person with darker hair. Tell us out loud, what is the name of the person you were thinking of? Anne. Anne. And uh, I, this question for you, how old were you when you had a crush on Anne? Three. Three. And uh, Abby, I asked for a four digit number. What was your four digit number? 4232. 4232? Mm -hmm. And what is the specific meaning of this number to you? Uh, it has to do with my grandmother. She lives at 4232. Oh, so your mother has this address. My and grandmother. Finally, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I <laughs> apologize. I'm going to now uh, just spotlight this so I'm nice and big. And Lucas, I tried to send you a picture. To imagine to project an image into your mind. What was the very first shape that popped into your mind, Lucas? A triangle. A triangle. Inside of that, I drew something else. What did you see in your mind? Circle. A circle inside of a triangle, Lucas. I think this might freak you out. Let me bring this up really, really close. A circle inside a triangle. But Connor, Anne, three years old, you said? Yep. Yeah, yeah that is absolutely crazy. Do you ever talk to Anne? No. Too bad, because if you did you would tell Anne that I just read your mind. Oh, and by the way, Abby, you said it was your grandmother's address? What's the street name in town? Uh, uh, I don't want to give away the town. Oh, but fair it's... enough, the street name is fine. Oh, uh, Woodland. Woodland, so mm -hmm. next time that you visit her at 4232 Woodland, tell her that I just read your mind. And... Uh... Christopher Carter does an amazing job. We've worked with him for years. He's always, always blowing people's minds when we have him either in person or virtual. As you can see, his shows are highly interactive. He's just like you're on stage with him. It's really a lot of fun. So please consider Christopher Carter. Um, we have one more artist for you and we're gonna shift directions a little bit to the lecture Sex Signals. Sex Signals is presented by Catharsis Productions who not only do Sex Signals, they also provide uh, the show Say What, which is a diversity program, The Hookup, which is another uh, Title IX program that we can do, Beat the Blame Game, which covers victim blaming. All of these programs are available through Catharsis Productions, but we wanted to showcase a little bit uh, on that program. So Sex Signals is one of our most popular programs. We've been actually presenting and selling this program since 2001. Uh, so they were way ahead of the Title IX game than everyone else was. Um, this program has been uh, performed for over 3 million students. It incorporates improvisation, humor, education, and audience interaction to provide a provocative look at dating, sex, and the core issues of consent and bystander intervention. So please watch a little bit about Sex Signals. Hey, what's up? My name is Anthony. He, him, his are my pronouns. Hey, I'm Anne, she, her, hers, and welcome to Sex Signals. Alrighty, so you may be thinking, wait, we're talking about sex? Nah, my parents are sitting on the couch right next to me. And can we say parents? You don't even know here. This year, Sex Signals, one of the most popular sexual assault prevention programs on college campuses, is brought to you as an updated live web program. 
Through its unorthodox, humor-facilitated, and inclusive approach, this presentation examines our culture, sex, the rise of online harassment, and prevention strategies like bystander intervention. So people are bringing up in the questions box that uh, being online probably empowered this guy. So I guess my question is, why do you think this sort of behavior takes place online? All right, someone's saying um, it's anonymous, yeah. Uh, there's like no uh, social cues, um, and you're not held accountable. Sure. I mean, that's probably why all kinds of racist, homophobic, transphobic crap is spewed online. I mean, I think that this person I was playing clearly thought that the same rules of human decency and consent didn't apply over the web. Like, he was treating this study session like his hunting ground. A two-person team of highly trained educators takes the audience on an interactive, relevant, and often hilarious exploration of the cultural messaging we receive about gender, sexuality, sexual health, and intimate relationships. Yes, and even if someone doesn't identify as a man or a woman, our critical culture still tries to divide us into those categories. All right, so tell us in the questions, what have women been taught about sex? Hmm. They've been taught, apparently, don't ever have sex. Uh, or if you do, just try to remain a virgin forever. I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah. Looks like uh, if you have sex, you are called all kinds of terrible things, ranging from slut to whore to worse. Uh, or you're called all kinds of terrible things, even if you don't have sex. Yeah. Wow, so it sounds like as women, it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. But if a woman doesn't even have sex, she could still be called a slut. Our dynamic team accomplishes this through facilitated dialogue and several semi-improvisational scenes, the final of which features a college student defending his friend from a recent accusation of rape. Do you think after all of those rapes that he was even in the right state of mind to make a decision about sex that night? It seemed like as long as Parker was into it, nothing else mattered. I mean, this is college. People drink and hook up all the time. I mean, seriously, what did this girl expect was going to happen? Wow, really? How many more questions are there? Um, two. Do you think that your friend Parker raped Nikki? And do you think that you helped him? This scene then leads to a focused discussion on the role we all play in stopping sexual violence. It enables audiences to identify intervention strategies and positively change the way they think, communicate, and act by encouraging bystander intervention in all aspects of their life. However long it is until you all are all back together, it's clear you got this. Whether your school exists online or on campus, you all are the people who actually make it happen. So you have a lot of cha uh, power to create positive change, not just on your campus, but wherever you are. Absolutely. We want you to have the best four to however many years y'all are going to be there. So go for it. Be awesome. <laughs> hey, welcome back. I want to thank everybody for spending an hour and an hour. Yeah, just an hour with us. If my Kaplan's right, you haven't really paid attention to the last 15 minutes, but hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, you can always watch this again. We're going to give you the recordings. Um, and the good news is you have another day of this tomorrow. If you come back at the same time, same channel, uh, you're going to have a different MC. Sue Boxrude is going to be taking care of you and introducing you to a lot of other acts on our roster, some comedy, some music, some other what else we have some yeah comedy music poetry lots of fun things lined up for you tomorrow so please come back and visit we'll also um i don't know if he can hop on but i also wanted to see if jake might be able to hop on screen here for a second to see and there he is hello the bearded man himself hi jake here i am hello chris how are you doing <laughs> so uh thanks jake uh everything ran swimmingly today thank you for all your hard work behind the scenes and making all this look smooth i kept my fingers together to try not make any noise. So I didn't even push a button through this entire process. So thank you for all your hard work. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to doing it again tomorrow.
All right, good. Uh, so Jake and Jolene are at How To Concerts. Not only do they do the bingo and uh, uh, with Jill, the chef, which I can't pronounce together, and then lots of other things, as well as uh, helping do uh, larger events through the virtual settings. Um, there are the people that will take care of you. So please um, reach out to them. Uh, they do an amazing uh, job. So uh, I think that's it for today. I want to thank you ever, all for coming. If you have any questions at all for us in regards to the acts you've seen, feel free to shoot us an email. You can just do it to info at bass .com. Our website is bass .com. I'm Chris Schuler. Scott Bass is always happy to chat with you. Sue Boxrood will be with you tomorrow. And we wish you an awesome afternoon. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.